A big thank you out to Sandy for the link. Stanley Frodsham 1965 Prophecy I was led to this prophecy spoken in 1965. It scares me to death yet provides great encouragement in the promises of the Lord. The judgment has begun at the house of God. That is what my spirit and my eyes are seeing. The trials and temptations are being poured out now to separate God's people. The word of God does not return to him void. Who will be able to stand before him? Scripture references were added later by men who have shared the prophecy. Spoken by Stanley Frodsham. Great darkness is coming upon the countries that have heard my gospel but no longer walk in it. My wrath shall be manifested against all ungodliness. It shall come with great intensity. My judgments are literal, and not a thing to be lightly passed over. Before I visit the nations in judgment, I will begin at my house. When I do cause my wrath to come upon the cities of the world, my people shall be separate. I desire a people without spot or wrinkle, and such shall be preserved by me in the time of my wrath coming upon all iniquity and unrighteousness. I am going to prepare you for the coming days by a hard path that will cause you to cry out continually unto me. For when the going is easy, men do not seek me, but rejoice in a temporary blessing. And when that blessing is removed, they so often turn this way and that way, but do not come to me. I am showing you these things that you may seek me continually and with great diligence. As you seek me, I will open up truths to you that you have not seen before, truths that will enable you to stand in the last days. Coming glory and deceiving spirits. When I visit my people in mighty revival power it is to prepare them for the darkness ahead. With the glory shall come great darkness, for the glory is to prepare my people for the darkness. I will enable my people to go through because of the visitation of my spirit. Take heed to yourselves lest ye be puffed up and think that you have arrived. Listen to the messengers, but do not hold man's persons in admiration. For many whom I shall anoint mightily with signs and miracles shall become lifted up and shall fall by the wayside. I do not do this willingly, I have made provision that they might stand. I call many into this ministry and equip them, but remember that many shall fall. They shall be like bright lights, and the people shall delight in them. But they shall be taken over by deceiving spirits, and shall lead many of my people astray. Hearken diligently concerning these things, for in the last days shall come seducing spirits, 1 Timothy 4 verse 1, that shall turn many of my anointed ones away. Many shall fall through divers lusts and because of sin abounding. But if you will seek me diligently I will put my spirit within you. Ezekiel 36 verse 27. When one shall turn to the right hand or to the left hand, you shall not turn with them, but keep your eyes wholly on the Lord. The coming days are the most dangerous, difficult and dark, but there shall be a mighty outpouring of my spirit upon many cities, and many shall be destroyed. My people must be diligently warned concerning the days that are ahead. Many shall turn after you seducing spirits, many are already seducing my people. It is those who do righteousness that are righteous. Many cover sins by great theological words. But I warn you of seducing spirits who instruct my people in an evil way. Many shall come with seducing spirits and hold out lustful enticements. You will find that after I have visited my people again, the way shall become more and more narrow, and fewer shall walk therein. But, be not deceived, the ways of righteousness are my ways. For though Satan come as an angel of light, 2 Corinthians 11 verses 13 through 15, hearken not to him, for those who perform miracles and speak not righteousness are not of me. I warn you with great intensity that I am going to judge my house and have a church without spot or wrinkle when I come. I desire to open your eyes and give you spiritual understanding that you may not be deceived, but may walk in uprightness of heart before me, loving righteousness and hating every evil way. Look unto me, and I, will make you to perceive with the eyes of the Spirit the things that lurk in darkness, that are not visible to the human eye. Let me lead you in this way that you may perceive the powers of darkness and battle against them. It is not a battle against flesh and blood, for if you battle in that way, you accomplish nothing. But if you let me take over and battle against the powers of darkness, then they are defeated, and then liberation is brought to my people. The Way of Deceivers I warn you to search the scriptures diligently concerning these last days, for the things that are written shall indeed be made manifest. 
There shall come deceivers among my people in increasing number, who shall speak forth the truth and shall gain the favor of the people, for the people shall examine the scriptures and say, What these men say is true. Then when they have gained the hearts of the people, then and then only shall they bring out these wrong doctrines. Therefore, I say that you should not give your hearts to men, nor hold people's persons in admiration. For by these very persons shall Satan enter into my people. Watch for seducers, 1 Timothy 3 verse 13. Do you think a seducer will brandish a new heresy and flaunt it before the people? He will speak the words of righteousness and truth and will appear as a minister of light, declaring the word. The people's hearts shall be one, they will bring out their doctrines, and the people shall be deceived. The people shall say, Did he not speak thus and thus? And did we not examine it from the word? Therefore he is a minister of righteousness. That he has now spoken we do not see in the word, but it must be right, for the other things he spoke were true. Be not deceived, for the deceiver will first work to gain the hearts of many and then shall bring forth his insidious doctrines. You cannot discern those who are of me and those who are not of me when they start to preach. But seek me constantly, and then when these doctrines are brought out, you shall have a witness in your heart that these are not of me. Fear not, for I have warned you. Many will be deceived, but if you walk in holiness and uprightness before the Lord, your eyes shall be opened, and the Lord will protect you. If you will constantly look unto the Lord, you will know when the doctrine changes, and you will not be brought into it. If your heart is right, I will keep you, and if you will look constantly to me, I will uphold you. The minister of righteousness shall be on this wise, his life shall agree with the word, and his lips shall give forth that which is wholly true and it will be no mixture. When the mixture appears, then you will know he is not a minister of righteousness. The deceivers speak first the truth and then error to cover their own sins, which they love. Therefore, I exhort and command you to study the scriptures relative to seducing spirits, for this is one of the great dangers of these last days. I desire you to be firmly established in my word, and not in the personalities of men, that you will not be moved as so many shall be moved. I would keep you in the paths of righteousness. Take heed to yourselves, and follow not the seducing spirits that are already manifesting themselves. Diligently inquire of me when you hear something that you have not seen in the word, and do not hold people's persons in admiration, for it is by this very method that Satan will hold many of my people. The way of triumph. I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly, that you may triumph where I triumphed. On the cross I triumphed over all the powers of Satan, and I have called you to walk the same path. It is when your life is on the cross that you shall know the victory that I have experienced. As you are on the cross and seated in me, then you shall know the power of the resurrection. When I come in my glory, the principalities and powers in the heavenly places shall be broken. Fret not, for I have given you power whereby you may tread down the powers of darkness and come forth victoriously. It was on the cross that I triumphed over all the powers of the enemy. My life shall flow through you as you enter into these precious truths. Look unto me, and appropriate my life. As your eyes and desires are toward me, and you know what it is to be crucified with me, then you shall live, and your anointing shall increase. It was not in my life that I walked upon the earth, but it was in my life when I was upon the cross that I openly spoiled principalities and powers, Colossians 2 verse 15. I am showing you truth that shall cause you to overcome, to have power over the wicked one truth that will liberate you and those around you. You shall know also the fellowship of my sufferings. There is no other way whereby you may partake of this heavenly glory and reign with me. If we suffer, we shall reign with him. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 12 King James Version. I desire to make these truths real within you. As you keep them before you, you will liberate many who are in bondage. You will have revelations of those in darkness and will have the keys to liberate the captives. Many seek to liberate, but they have not the keys. Upon the cross continually you will know the power of my resurrection that you may also partake of my glory. As you are willing to walk with me and rejoice in your sufferings, you shall partake of my glory. Look unto me, for ye have need of power to overcome the wicked one and the bondage in other lives. If you will indeed judge yourself, you shall not be judged. 1 Corinthians 11:31
as you seek my face and desire to be cleansed by me in all truth and sincerity of heart, I will judge you in the secret place, and the things that are in the secret place of your heart shall not be made manifest to others. I will do it in the secret place, and no man shall know it, and the shame that shall be seen on many faces shall not be seen on your face. Therefore, in love and mercy I am instructing you, and, therefore, have I said that if a man judge himself, he shall not be judged. It is not my good pleasure that the shame of my people be seen by all. How can I judge the world if I judge not first my own house? Hearken unto these things I am telling you. If you will not hearken to me, your shame shall be evident to all. God's part and our part. I would have you consider my life on earth the anointing upon me was great. Yet the temptations were great on every side, in one form and then in another, offering me first the glory of the kingdoms of the earth and then reviling and persecuting me. There will be great glory given to my people, and yet the temptations shall be intensified from every side. Think not that with the glory there shall be no temptations or persecutions. The glory to my church shall be great, and so shall the temptations from the enemy to turn my people from my paths. I am warning you that when the glory shall be manifested, the temptations shall be great, until very few that start shall finish. First, there shall be offered them great worldly possessions, and then great revilings and unbelief. Consider your Lord, that as he walked, so it shall be for you. There shall be need of great intensity of purpose. At times, everyone shall rise up against you, simply to turn you from the course that I would put you on. It is written of me that I set my face as a flint to go the direction my father had prescribed for me, Isaiah 50-7. If you will finish the course the Lord has laid down for you, you will have to set your face as a flint with great determination you must walk in the course laid down for you. Many of your loved ones and those who follow with you shall persuade you and try to turn you from the course. With many words that seem right in the natural will they speak to you. Did not Christ rebuke Peter, who would turn him from the course God had prescribed? Matthew 16 22, 23, understand these two things and meditate upon them solemnly. The persecution and the darkness shall be as great as the glory, in order to try to turn the elect and the anointed ones from the path the Lord has laid down for them. Many shall start, but few shall be able to finish because of the greatness of grace that shall be needed to be able to endure unto the end. The temptation and persecution of your Lord was continuous. He was tempted by Satan in many forms throughout his entire life, and even on the cross when the ungodly cried out, If thou be the Christ come down from the cross. Think not that there shall be a time of no persecution, for it shall be from the time of your anointing unto the end of difficulties and great persecution to the end. The Lord must prepare you to be an overcomer in all things, that you may be able to finish the course. The persecution shall increase, even as the anointing shall increase. In paths of judgment and righteousness shall the Lord God lead his people and bring them into that place which he has chosen for them. For the Lord has chosen a place for his people, a place of righteousness and holiness where he shall encamp round about them, and all who will be led of the Lord shall be brought into this holy place, for the Lord delights to dwell in his people and to manifest himself through his people. The holiness of the Lord shall be manifested through his people. Let the Lord lead you in difficult places. He led his people of old through the place where no man dwelt where no man had passed through in a place of great danger, and in the shadow of death. The Lord will indeed lead his people through such places, and yet he will bring them out into a place of great glory. Understand that the way toward the glory is fraught with great danger, and many shall fall to the right or to the left, many shall camp on lesser ground, but the Lord has a place of holiness, and no unclean things shall dwell among his people. Put your trust in him and he will bring you into a place of holiness. He desires to bring his people into great glory, the like of which has never been seen, what the Lord will do for those who put their trust in him. It is a place of darkness and great danger that separates his people into the place he would have them walk in. He will protect them from the voices that would turn them from his path. He will bring them through the dark places, and through the treacherous paths, out into the light of his glory. He will rejoice greatly over his beloved, and cause you to be filled with joy unspeakable. He seeks to lead his people into a new place of grace and glory where he will indeed encamp among them. Put your trust in him, and he will surely bring you into this new place.
Fear not the days to come, but fear this only, that you shall walk in a manner pleasing to the Lord. In this time I am ordering and setting up my church, and it shall indeed be pure, without spot or wrinkle. I will do a work in my beloved that has not been seen since the foundation of the world. I have shown you these things that you may seek the Lord diligently with all your heart, and that you may be a preserver of his people. Run not to this one nor to that one, for the Lord has so ordained that salvation is in him, and in him alone. You shall not turn to this shepherd, or to that one, for there shall be a great scattering upon the earth. Therefore, look unto him, for he will indeed make these things clear to you. You shall not look here nor there, for wells that once had water shall be no more. But, as you diligently seek him, he shall increase your strength and your faith that he may be able to prepare you for this time that is coming. The truths that I have revealed to you must become a part of you, not just an experience, but a part of your very nature. Is it not written that I demand truth in the inward parts? It is the truth of the Lord expressed in your very being that shall hold you. Many shall experience the truth, but the truth must become a part of you your very life. As men and women look upon you, they will hear not only the voice, but see the expression of the truth. Many shall be overcome because they are not constant in my ways, and because they have not permitted the truths to become part of them. I am showing you these truths that you may be prepared and having done all, to stand.